Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing another review roundup. I've done a couple of these in the past, and I wanted to get more in the habit of doing so, especially for products that like might not be enough to do a full video review on, just to show you guys updates. Because especially like recently, since the beginning of 2021, now that I'm no longer on my no buy or my low buy, I have been picking up small products here and there, like some primers, some foundations, and I wanted to make sure that I reminded myself to follow up with you guys and give you my full review. So here I have a setting spray, I have three primers, three foundations, a bronzer, and then a couple of hair care products I wanted to review for you guys. Before we jump in, I do want to go ahead and plug my Instagram once more. Here's my Instagram. All of these products, either as I got them in PR or as I purchased them, I hauled them or I unboxed them on my Instagram stories. And I've been doing daily either look updates or uh, updates from my Pan That palette in my stories. And I have several um, um, highlights, that's what they're called, highlights pinned onto my profile. So make sure you follow me there if you want to see more actual like up-to-date day-to-day updates. All right, let's start with the hair care products because I only have a couple of them and oh, they were all actually sent to me in PR. <laughs> I have a list of all the products I'm also talking about today listed in the description box as well. The first product I have here is from the brand Organics, and this is the Tea Tree and Mint Conditioner. This was sent to me in PR, and I was actually sent the shampoo like a year ago in PR. Something that's strange about this brand is I asked if they could send me like the shampoo and conditioner, because I've never really heard of a brand sending out only the shampoo or the conditioner for a review. So I reviewed the shampoo. If I can find the video where I reviewed it, I'll throw it up in the cards. They finally sent me their conditioner like a month and a half ago-ish, which is a bit odd to me. So um, I do not have any experience using the shampoo with the conditioner. So I just want to mention that right out the gate. Um, I did like this conditioner. The only downside is my hair is thick and it is curly. So I go through conditioner a lot faster than I do shampoo. So this only lasted me, I think I said it was about a month-ish, maybe a little bit less. And I only wash my hair twice a week. So that's eight washes. And I wasn't even just using this conditioner. I was also using another conditioner with it. So probably if I only use this conditioner, it'd be a lot less. I did really enjoy the scent. It is a very lovely, like exactly. So mint and tea tree, if you like those scents, you'll love this. Um, it was really conditioning. I liked it. I definitely did not get any of like the tingly sensations from the shampoo. I remember loving that about the shampoo. It was really good for my scalp. I could actually feel like the tea tree affecting my scalp and I liked it. Um, none of that is in the conditioner. The conditioner is just like a smooth kind of smoothing regular slippery conditioner, you know? This is not actually the lid it came with. I took the lid off because I was using a different product so I could stand it upside down and just squeeze it out. So this is a different lid I popped back on. It's from a different conditioner. Um, but the, the packaging was fine. The lid was okay. My only downside is that I do think that these are a little expensive. Uh, the shampoo I thought was worth it if you have issues with like dry scalp or dandruff because it really worked to treat my scalp. But this, because the conditioner went through so fast because of my thick hair, I really don't think this one's worth it. And again, unfortunately, I have no experience using both the shampoo and conditioner together. Next, I was sent this product in PR through Influencer and Whey. This is the Whey Curl Cream, and this is a brand new product. I am so happy now that a lot more brands are jumping onto the bandwagon of curly hair care. I have seen so many brands come out with curl creams and gels, and it's just, it's a fantastic time for curly hair, I will say. So this curl cream, first off, it's heavily scented, but I actually really like heavily scented hair care products, especially when I go in to refresh my hair hair because nothing's worse than like th day three or four hair where like it looks limp and then you go in to refresh it and it just smells like wet hair you know um so this smells delightful it smells like flat it's very flowery so I like that. It's your traditional, I don't want to pull out too much, but it's your traditional like just thick curl cream texture and it's very moisturizing and it works really well both on refreshing and also on your wash day hair. It is a little expensive, but the size of this, I do appreciate that it is larger. Um, there is another curl cream I'm reviewing, so this is like the size of this one. So this one is eight fluid ounces and then the other one is 5.1 fluid ounces. So I do think that this has a decent amount of product in it. It is a little pricey. This is more of like a treat yourself kind of curl cream, you know, like the same way that I like to buy higher end loose powders every now and then you know like Laura Mercier or the Givenchy um that's kind of how I feel this is but I really like this so far I've used about half of it and I just really enjoy it next another so this is called a curl cream it's not really a cream but this surprised the hell out of me I love this so much this is from Madison Reed remember how I mentioned brands getting into curly products so Madison Reed first sent me their hair color kit in PR last year it was in 
was it in 2020? It was either, it was late 2019 or early 2020. I'll throw the original video up in the cards, but I loved their hair color kit. And again, after a few months, they reached out to me to send me another kit. I think it was like every six months I tell you to touch up your color. So they sent me that kit. And after that video, um, they asked if they could send me any other products. And I saw that they had actually, in between my first video and my second video, they came out with a curl cream. And I was like, hell yeah, I want to try that curl cream. So they sent me this in PR. Now, I said it's not like a traditional curl cream because let me show you the texture. Actually, let me do it on the back of my hand because I want to show you this versus like tr the traditional curl cream. So I'm going to get a little bit of the way one out and I'm just going to. OK, so I know it's going to be a little bit difficult to see here, but the curl cream from Way it's like a traditional, like regular cream. It's a white color when it comes out and then you kind of mix it in and it turns clear. The one from Madison Reed, it's not really a cream. It's more like a, uh, a serum. That's the word. So it came out more like a serum. It's like a thick, uh, I, this sounds gross, snotty serum, but hear me out. It's amazing. <laughs> And I'm not even going to waste this bit. I'm going to take this and I'm going to add it to my ends. Okay, so this is 5.1 fluid ounces. And I did say that it was smaller than the other one, but because of the texture of this, I actually have to use a lot less of this because it's a serum texture versus how much I have to use of the whey. This smells fairly strongly of... It's not hair care chemicals. It's you know, If you've ever used a Madison Reed hair care kit, that's what it smells like. It smells like their hair dye kit. Um, but it's not bad. Like, I personally enjoy the scent. It is heavily scented. So if you don't like heavily scented things, these hair care products are not going to be for you. But that texture, I love it. I actually used it. I just washed my hair yesterday. And I used this as my leave-in before I styled. I have not had, like, better hair care days since using this. I just recently cut my hair by myself because I didn't want to go out to a salon right now. Um, but I get like the biggest, like bounciest curls now using this leave-in. I, I am shocked. I am surprised. And especially because it's from a brand I kind of least expected it from. So I'm very shocked and impressed by this. I am once again about like, mm, I think I'm a third of the way through because I do have to use less of this product than the other products I've been using. But I already know I'm going to be buying this again when I'm out because I've gotten like the best results from any other leave-ins or curl creams I've used probably in like the last year or so. And I've been testing out a lot of hair care products. So way to go, Madison Reed. Okay, so that is all of the hair care products. Let's move into the primers that I have. So the first one is the Physician's Formula Butter Believe It Putty Primer. Now this is different from a few other putty primers I've tried. This one, it, it feels more oil-based. Like when I do this, it, it melts into my skin a lot faster and it does leave a bit of an oily residue. So to me, this is kind of more of like a solid serum primer as opposed to like a true kind of thick, pore minimizing putty primer. That also being said, I did not see this really affect my pores at all. I mean, it gave me a nice smooth kind of like, it felt like a nice silicone based primer, uh, you know, like Smashbox primer kind of feel, you know? So it, it worked well like that, but it did not minimize my pores. So if you're looking for something that's going to minimize your pores, this isn't going to be your bet. I still, um, have not tried this side by side with the other putty primers that I own. I do want to eventually do that, but for the first few weeks that I used it, I just wanted to use it on its own and get a feel for how it performed. So, not my favorite, not my least favorite. Um, I am going to keep it in my collection. I feel like it does have a use, but I do feel like the putty primer, it might be a bit misleading. I also feel like this probably could have been packaged better in a like a squeezy tube just because of the way that it's textured. Next, I have two primers from Milani, and I I was like also really impressed by this. I first have the Chill Out Soothing Primer and then I have the Skin Quench Hydrating Primer. Now the hydrating primer was a bit stickier than I was kind of expecting it to be. I thought it would be like more of a smooth kind of moisturizing primer. It was a little sticky, um, but that actually worked pretty well as a primer. It is a primer, so it does go under your um, foundation. I would not wear this on its own. There are some primers that I like wearing under foundation and then also by its own, like on a no makeup makeup day. This, because of how sticky it is, I would not recommend you wear it unless you're planning to put makeup on top of it. It was moisturizing and it did feel, um, how am I trying to say? It When I knew I was putting on 
like thick amount of products um, and it was going to be cold or dry I knew this was great to put underneath it so it felt good I did not see any irritation in my skin or anything and this worked well both on my dry spots and in my more combination kind of oily areas because I do have combination skin I have some pretty oily areas and then I have some really dry spots particularly right here tend to be my driest spots Okay, and then the Chill Out Primer, it honestly, the only difference between like these two that I could really kind of tell right off the bat is that this one wasn't as sticky. They kind of did the same thing. I don't really think I needed both. Um, out of the two of them, I probably would pick out the Chill Out one instead just because I am looking for more of a soothing primer. I do get redness up here on my cheeks, so I, I picked this one up because I thought it would help soothe the redness. Again, it felt really good under my uh, foundations, though this one, because it's not as sticky, I could wear it without makeup and then I could also wear it underneath my foundation. So if you were to pick just like one out of these two, I'd probably go with the chill out one. Unless you're really looking for like a grippy primer you could wear under your foundation, then this one's gonna be your bed. Okay, let's move in next to the foundations I have to review. So the first one is from Positions Formula and this is the Butter Believe It Foundation and Concealer. I have to say, I was very impressed by um, the application and how full coverage this was. This is solid full coverage. I love the packaging. It feels nice and heavy. It is a glass bottle. I like the uh, pump. It works really well. The shade itself, not a terrible match for me. I think it might actually be just like a slight too light, but I can work with too light. That is fine. Once I talk about the other two foundations, I'll do a quick swatch side by side to show you um, just the swatches on me, but I was very impressed by this. It Again, it was just good full coverage. It worked well with different powders, different concealers. I, I did not like this as an under eye concealer. I did use this just as a traditional kind of all over the face foundation because for me, I have like fine lines under my eyes. And for the most part, no matter what concealers I use, they're gonna go into those fine lines. So I don't really kind of take things seriously when they say they're a foundation and concealer, except for Dermacol. Dermacol is just awesome. <laughs> We're not talking about Dermacol right now though. Uh, this Butter Believe It. I really like it and I got a lot of use out of it to the point where I had to put it away so I could use other products and test out other things. So I'm very impressed by this and I'm happy they came out with a new foundation that actually works. I tried out a couple of their other like BBCC creams in the past. Nothing really ever worked for me. Same with their concealers. I still haven't found a concealer from them that I like. Next, let's talk about a product I received in PR, also through Influencer and Milk Makeup this time. This is the new Milk Makeup Sunshine Skin Tint. So I've used a little bit more than half of the bottle, and I have to say I was really impressed by this as well. The packaging is really unique, and from what I've read, they are going to come out with like refills for just this cartridge of actual foundation, so that you don't have to rebuy the whole thing, you can just replace that cartridge, which is supposed to cut down on like waste, so I really do enjoy that. I thought having the rollerball with the foundation up there would be too messy and would bug me, but it's been very clean. Like, you can see everything, and it's clean. <laughs> and that's not even me going in and cleaning it or anything, it just... It works out well that way. The shade, I think I could have gotten a slight lighter shade, but because it's so thin and light coverage, I don't think it made that much of a difference. I am wearing it today. Uh, I am wearing concealer and powder on top of it, but I am wearing it today and I've worn this for quite a few days now and it works beautifully. I've set it, I've not set it. If you're looking for like a nice light no makeup makeup, you can put this on with a little bit of concealer and not set anything and you're just glowy and you're beautiful. But you can also use it the other way. Like I like it. So you can put it on, you can put concealer, you can powder over it. It plays well with concealers, with powders. I can blush bronze highlight on top of it and it looks fine. So this is actually a really nice versatile product that pretty surprised me. I do think it is a little expensive for what it is, especially because as we're about to see, the drugstore has now been doing a really good job of coming out with like good affordable BB and CC creams that are kind of along these same lines or even more full coverage. Um, but if you are someone who does not wear a lot of makeup, who loves no makeup makeup, or who just wants something that's light coverage that will even out your complexion, I would go for this. And I do believe that once you buy this once, the refills are gonna be a little bit cheaper than the actual full product, but I don't know if the refill cartridges are actually out yet. Last but not least for foundations, I have this Camo CC Cream from e.l.f. I finally found it and tried it out in this blew me out of the water. This is full coverage, comfortable CC cream amazingness. This is kind of so far like a really good dupe for a BBCC cream that I loved. It was the Misha one, but those shades were just, the shades just did not work for me. It was kind of expensive depending on where you could buy it. This 
just mm, everything worked well except for the shade. The shade is way too dark for me. I got the shade 140W because I found this, I believe it was at a CVS and I thought it was the lightest shade because it's the lightest shade that they had in stock. There is one lighter shade than this one um, and I think I have it right now in my Ulta cart because um, I really want to try it out and see if it works a little bit better because when I wear this I do get like a demarcation between like my neck and the rest of my body which looks a little kind of bananas but I love this so much I continue to use it. Again, full coverage, comfortable, works well with condi works well with conditioners, works well with concealers and powders and blush bronzer highlight. I this just shocked me. And when I mentioned when I hauled this on my Instagram, I had people like commenting and sending me messages saying that they love this so much. And now I know why. Now I know why. Okay, and here are some swatches for you guys, very different shades. This is the Physician's Formula, which is just a slight tad bit too light for me, but I can make it work. The middle here is the Milk Makeup, which is very kind of dark, but because it's so sheer, it really just kind of blends out and matches me a little bit better. And then over here is the Elf Camo CC Cream, which is slightly too dark for me. And so this is the one where I really do need to get the lighter shade, the 120, because um, right now this is the 140 shade. Next, the last product we have from Physicians Formula, because I did kind of do a little mini Physicians Formula haul a few weeks ago. This is the Butter Bronzer Matte. This is the matte butter bronzer they came out with. And to be honest, I really didn't see too much of a difference between the regular butter bronzer and this butter bronzer. I think if you already have the butter bronzer, you don't really need to go out and buy this, especially if you're like me and you have the full butter collection box and you literally have every single butter bronzer. I thought this was gonna be a little bit more different, a little bit more out there, but I mean, it's, don't get me wrong, it is a great bronzer, but it's kind of the same exact thing as the butter bronzer. <laughs> so I'm not upset, like I'm definitely gonna get use out of this, but again, I do have that full butter collection box, so I didn't really need to get this. So yes, this is only good if you, if you don't have any Physician Formula bronzers, so then you can make your choice. This one is matte, matte, very matte. Um, so if you're looking for a matte bronzer, I'd say go with this one. If you're looking for a more glowy one, though, to be honest, it doesn't look that super glowy. But if you're looking for a more glowy one, go with the original butter bronzer. And I don't know if they actually have different shades of the matte one yet. Because I know when they first came out with the butter bronzer, it was just one bronzer shade that has expanded. I know there's at least 10 shades in that. Because I know my butter box has it already like eight at least. Um, and they did come out with a few more shades since that butter box came out. So I don't know if they already have different shades in this matte one. Hopefully they do extend it if it does well. All right. And last but not least, we unfortunately have a dud from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the airbrush. Can I speak? This is the airbrush flawless setting spray. This is the most drying setting spray I think I have ever tried like I would have a full face of powder and feel a little bit dry and then spray this on and then feel drier somehow oh I hated it oh my god so I'm still using it I don't want to <laughs> that's, that's the downside I don't want to waste it because it was expensive and I hate wasting products so I'm gonna finish it but I'm not gonna like it <laughs> I think I'm gonna start using this in combination with another setting spray because it just it, it just like sucks all the moisture out of my face and I already had a face full of powder I don't get it. I don't get it. So uh, I'm not a huge fan. It doesn't really work any better throughout a full day than like my other favorite affordable setting sprays like from Milani and Wet n Wild. So just save your money. Don't pick this up. Get something more affordable. You know, go for the Milani, go for the Wet n Wild. If you even want to go for the Urban Decay, don't go for the Urban Decay. Go for the Scandinavia. Just don't go for this one. Okay, so that is everything in this review roundup. Let me know down below if you have tried any of these products and what your thoughts are, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.